Space for Giants' aim is to secure space for these magnificent giants to thrive in. And Loisaba is exactly the type of habitat that the charity was set up for. Conservancies like this one act as refuges for elephants in which to escape the relentless poaching, but they're also places for conservationists to study the natural behaviours of elephants in order to better protect them. This is the front line of the battle to protect elephants. Mobile units of rangers like this one in Laikipia patrol Africa's wildernesses daily in an attempt to stop poachers from killing elephants for their tusks. Samuel Lekimaroro oversees this unit of rangers. Samuel, describe for me a, a, a typical patrol. I mean, how dangerous can it get? There are so many uh, challenges involved and risks getting up very early. The team is typically mobile. Their home is the car and the bush. Risks from uh, wildlife. We have had one of our team commanders who was shot on the thigh by some bad guys who were pursuing. So that is how dangerous it can be. But the rangers say, no, we should soldier on for the sake of the communities and for the sake of wildlife. For Space for Giants, it's much more than just boots on the ground. It's making frontline protection smarter. They cover several aspects, other than just the physical, you know, tactical skills. They're also, you know, taught on uh, some bits of intelligence gathering and how to work with communities to get information. We have succeeded three times on operations by sending out one of these rangers to the community to be our ear on the ground and, you know, giving us feeding of information. These efforts are critical. Since 2007, more than a third of African elephants have been lost, most of them from poaching. That's an average of one elephant every half hour, day in, day out, year after year. Tell me a little bit about how the community is reacting to this, though. Normally, these communities live and interact naturally with wildlife. But, you know, without having that back set of mind of thinking that there is benefit out of it. So to them, it was just wildlife naturally. But now, they are more than that. It is money, it is education, it is health, it is, you know, economic development. So there is that change of attitude. In the face of ever-present threats from poaching, elephants also have determined and courageous people on their side here in the wilderness. They have fierce advocates elsewhere too. Across Africa, most of those arrested with elephant ivory or rhino horn used to receive what was essentially a slap on the wrist. Now, that's changing. In Kenya, a new law carries maximum fines of more than $200,000 and life imprisonment for the trafficking of endangered species like elephants. Space for Giants' Faith Mina is currently monitoring more than 40 wildlife crime cases proceeding through the courts in central Kenya. I'm here to observe how court proceedings work, and today a man who was arrested in 2014 with two pieces of elephant ivory and an AK-47 is due to give his defence. He denies charges of possession of illegal wildlife trophies and an unregistered weapon. Monitoring the trials helps to make sure they proceed smoothly. The accused stood up and actually I was quite surprised at how short a time that was as well. So what happened today with him? The previous magistrate uh, recused himself. Now it's being handled by another magistrate. Uh, so this magistrate cannot read the handwriting of the previous magistrate. Oh, okay. So. so he cannot proceed without knowing what has been happening with the case. Relatively small issues like these can ultimately mean trials collapse. Across Africa, Space for Giants is training investigators, prosecutors and magistrates so cases against poachers are as strong as they can be. Just like it matters with the rangers in the field protecting those animals, it also matters here because when it comes to court, we are able to reach not just the accused person, but members of the public. When that case results in a conviction, it sends the message out there, poaching does not pay. 
Winning the battle against poaching requires a multifaceted approach, from the protection of elephants on the front line to curbing the demand for animal parts in Asia and everything in between. But what's been underestimated and perhaps overlooked in the past is the importance of making the prosecution process watertight. This is without a doubt also the front line in the fight against poaching. It's a difficult and challenging task, but thankfully Space for Giants is making progress in this regard. But another big part of the answer is the vested interest of the people who live alongside elephants and the potential to understand that these magnificent animals can be precious allies, not costly enemies. Space for Giants headquarters are just outside of this town, Nanyuki. It's a place that's typical of many African towns. Its population has almost doubled in the past few decades. And with such a high rate of growth, more people need land to live on and to grow food on. So it's perhaps not surprising that many of them take issue with setting aside large areas of land for wildlife. Robert Nyalia edits a regional newspaper based in Nanyuki. His readers' views are typical of those of many modern Africans. So Robert, tell me, what is the attitude towards wildlife, and elephants in particular? For most uh, Kenyan people, the elephant is viewed as a menace, because uh, wherever the issue of elephants arises, it's more of conflict, it's more of uh, elephants trespassing into people's farms. Thousands of elephants and other spectacular wildlife are living less than an hour's drive from here. But the truth is, very few locals have seen any of it. Without getting the chance to experience it for themselves or understanding how important their wildlife is and how it might benefit them, it's understandable that they should see no value to setting aside wilderness areas when they need to grow crops. Finding a balance between economic growth and conservation is one of our planet's biggest challenges. Towns like Nanyuki all across Africa need to find ways to support their growing human populations alongside their need to protect their surrounding environment and the endangered wildlife. Chege Amos monitors elephant movements and identifies new members born to herds for Space for Giants. We have collared some elephants, 45 elephants so far, and they are moving around with our collars, collecting important information, one, on where they are about, and two, the migratory corridors they are using, and three, where they are causing conflict. Like, for example, in this particular map is, is the movement of uh, elephants within the three counties. And from this, you can be able to tell that there are factors that made this elephant to spend good time in this location and spend sufficient amount of time in that particular so habitat. Two key areas where obviously there's a lot of food, they feel safe, and in between that you've got the corridors, they move fast between. Yes. And it's only through information like this that you can sure. show, okay, we need to build settlements, but just not here. Not here. This is where the elephants go. Exactly, yeah. The data collected are critical. Only through reliable research like this can Space for Giants and its partners across Africa make the right decisions to protect elephants. As the area of land given over to farmland expands to grow crops for Africa's rapidly increasing population, wildlife habitat is encroached upon more and more. And along the boundary between human settlements and wilderness areas, human-elephant conflict is on the rise. Hungry elephants are tempted into farmers' fields and in one night can consume one family's entire harvest. Farmers confronted by crop raiding elephants will try to scare them away, but if that doesn't work, the elephants are sometimes shot and killed. In a bid to end this conflict, Space for Giants is building electrified fences that give elephants a harmless low pulse of electricity that steers them away from the farmland. This is Sami Gathui, who leads Space for Giants' fence building team. How many kilometres of fencing are you putting up, Sammy? This section is going for six kilometres, but the six kilometre section will complete a 20 kilometre stretch that Amazing. we have completed. So how are the farmers reacting to the fencing so far? Farmers are very happy. 
And now they are able to sleep through the night without staying out to guard their crops. Yes. So they are very uh, appreciative to the work that we are doing. I presume you're also educating them on the elephants exactly. and how special they are for yep. the environment? One thing is that they know the benefits of elephants. Yes. It is a source of revenue for the county. We have a slogan that good fences make good neighbours. Good fences farmers, make good neighbours. Farm, uh, farmers like that. and elephants. I like that. Yeah. Paul Jiroge has had its crop destroyed and neighbours injured by elephants. But last year, Space for Giants completed a fence not far from here and things are dramatically different today. So what do you grow here, Jiroge? Maize, like mm -hmm. you can see. Yes. Uh, we have potatoes, sweet potatoes. Ooh, we nice. have uh, uh, beans uh -huh. like, and we have bananas, we have sugar cane. We have a lot of uh, food. What happened when the elephants came? Wow, when the elephants came, you know, they used to come almost every day. Even when I was far, I was fearing about my family. Okay. So in the morning when they were to go to school, we had also to make sure that there are no elephants along the way. So it's not only that they would damage all your crops, they could also... Do some Injure damages, your children yes. if they were surprised as well. And... Very true. Okay, so Droge, now with a fence that works properly, the evidence is clear to see. You can grow amazing crops, but, but tell me a bit about how you feel your life has changed now that you can keep the elephants in the conservancy and away from your home. Imagine I can leave my young daughter. You have seen her. She's about 12 years now. I can leave her here when the mother is busy elsewhere. You can safety. see my donkeys, where they are. Yes. Very safe. You, we are, you, you can see now I'm building, you know. <laughs> when and I can see now you are very happy. <laughs> <laughs> You're very happy. Even when you understand why elephants would target farmland like this, because of their ever-shrinking wild habitat, the truth is they can be destructive and even dangerous when they're threatened by farmers who are defending their land. But the Space for Giants fence building program seems to be working. The number of crop raiding incidents has fallen dramatically. Not only that, but when farmers' crops are secured, attitudes towards elephants change. And that's a very promising development in the fight to protect Africa's most iconic species. This is Loisaba Tented Camp, operated by Elewana. It's one of two lodges in Loisaba that provide tourists with a luxury safari experience, from the accommodation to the wildlife encounters. A substantial proportion of the camp's revenue supports conservation and local communities. We've been able to put up a dispensary. We've put up also a school in the community, which is really working well because now we've got more kids going to school to learn not only how to read and write, but also about the wildlife. Since the tourists are coming here to see the wildlife, then they know that this is how it's contributing back to them. Space for Giants brings investment into landscapes like this across Africa. Businesses create jobs and buy from local suppliers. They drive the national economy and make conservation a valuable industry. This is what securing habitats means, making wild places pay dividends so their assets, the wildlife and the natural beauty, become something both governments and people want to fight to protect. What's taking place in the village of Ewaso is an ideal case study for how effective conservation can significantly benefit local communities. Here, revenue from tourism and other small businesses operating out of Loisaba Conservancy has been injected back into the economy. A school has been built, teachers employed, the infrastructure improved and veterinary services provided for the livestock. The wildlife is protected and the people living alongside it are directly benefiting from it. Edward is a village elder here in Iwaso. So do the people of Iwaso look at elephants differently now? Of course, yes. They look differently because we are earning from this elephant. People thought conservation is just nothing. But later, people came and learned. And that's why we, we are saying conservation really pays. That's why I said it has improved economic standard of our people. Edward, it has been an honour and a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. 
The long-term protection of elephants can only happen with the support of the people who live alongside them. And with tangible benefits going to local communities here, there's a very real chance of achieving that. And all across Africa, space for elephants can be secured not just through tourism, but through other small industries within protected areas, like solar power arrays and small-scale livestock grazing, so that both elephants and communities can be provided for and can thrive long into the future. Of course, the threat from poaching is still a very real one and must be eliminated if elephants are to have any chance of surviving. Hopefully, with improved anti-poaching patrols and stricter prosecutions, we can beat the poaching crisis. But if there isn't any elephant habitat left by then, all those efforts will have been in vain, which is why the work Space for Giants is doing in securing wildlife habitat and providing livelihoods is so very important. People see us as an elephant conservation charity. We're not. What we are is an elephant landscape conservation charity because it's those landscapes that provide oxygen, carbon sequestration, biodiversity, medicine, livelihoods, tourism. So, you know, it's not just about elephants. It's those landscapes that are so important to humanity. So if we can conserve elephants effectively, we can also have a better chance of ensuring we've got a future on this planet. There's a massive challenge in conservation where so many protected areas just exist on paper. How do we ensure they function as well-maintained, well-resourced ecosystems providing life for all of us? Just setting aside wild places for their intrinsic value is a noble ambition, but it doesn't have any place in the reality of today's political, economic context, particularly in developing countries. So if elephants are employing people, providing people with an education, giving them basic medical care, then they're valuable and people will respect the space they live in. The only word that matters in this game, value. How do you ensure that elephants and their habitat generate value for people who live alongside them, for people operating regionally, nationally, internationally. And once you create that value, how you channel the flow of that value is really what is going to ensure that elephants got a future. That's really for us is, is making sure that elephant space is secure forever. Forever isn't tomorrow, it's not 10 years, it's not 100 years. It is forever and that's got to be at the heart of our goal.